Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over some of the wiring aspects of the E30 and unboxing a lot of the stuff. I finally got, I would say, 90% of the stuff I need to do the wiring on the car, so I kind of want to go over that and the plan's a little closer. I know I've said a couple things, but I, I kind of like to see things, so I know other people do. So we'll do an unboxing of some stuff and kind of get into it and the reasons why I did chose certain things and what the plans are. So first off, this is the Hardwire PDM. This is the heart of the car. It's a power distribution module, so all the channels that are powered on the car go through this. The advantage of doing something like this is you don't have relays. It's pretty much like the circuit breaker on your house. It, the circuits in it can trip and you can reset them. You can also look at the data on your computer, you can plug into it and see maybe why it tripped, when it tripped. You can also set parameters in the PDM itself to try and reset it automatically in a certain time frame, and then it'll quit and just keep it tripped. So that's kind of nice. Just if maybe you have something that randomly tripped from vibration, it'll automatically reset because I mean that happens a lot in our race cars and. There's some other things you can do, like you can set like a button, you can make it, you can program your keypad, I will show you the keypad in a minute here, you can program the keypad to do multiple things. So it can be a momentary switch, it can be like a solid state switch, you can also have, like for me, I'll give you an example, I want a switch for my wipers. If I press it once, it'll be low speed, if I press it twice, It'll be high speed, press it three times, it goes off. So that eliminates the need for two switches into one. And also, I'll show you some cool things on the keypad you can do to kind of show those different things. It's just really neat. The What you can do with this is amazing. So let's unbox it. This is a company from the UK. They just came out. The, what drew me to them was the pricing. The pricing is about a third of uh, like a MoTeC system and it does a lot of the same things. Yes, it's not a MoTeC, but at the same time, I mean, you look at it, the first impressions when I got it, I was like, it gave a nice case. Like they really personalized it even for the, the budget that they were within, which is really important to me. It shows a company actually cares about developing their product. So first impressions when I open it, it's a pretty nice unit. Um, you see a little closer, you've got the battery input, the USB hookup, and then all the outputs. It, it does use, I'll show you those, DT, Deutsch DT connectors, which are, are really nice units. I mean, they're very affordable. They're probably the best budget friendly, in my opinion, uh, connector style. So you notice right away that the casing is composite. I think that's really where they save money. A lot of the higher end ones are real slim and they're aluminum so me i'm not gonna throw it i mean i think this is really nice for the 900 dollars i spent on it this is the 15 channel one or 15 output one they have a smaller one and then a 25 i think the smaller one's like a 10. um it it, it seems like a really nice unit i'm really excited to try it so let's see what else comes with it so you get the nice case they have a nice it looks like a just nylon or plastic cut uh, keychain, which is pretty cool. I'll give you a box full of. Let me move this case over here so it's not in the. Bear with me a minute. All right. So, give us the case with, which is cool. Show off the camera. All the connectors are color coded, which is cool. They give you the stuff for the power wire. They give you the pins and everything. The only thing I might change is these are, I like the solid barrel style crimps instead of the flange style like these are. I think they're just a bit stronger and I just, they're they're a lot easier to do in a cleaner, cleaner look. So I might switch the pins out, but that's nothing. That's nothing major. That's just kind of my personal preference. They give you, your cable for your computer to the PDM unit itself. And they also 
I can get it out of the case. Give you, this I'm assuming this is the software, which is kind of cool. Hopefully it'll focus, maybe. Let's see if I can get it to focus a little bit. Maybe, nope. So it's just the, it's a key design. It's a nice aluminum um, flash drive. So you'll have the program. And then I'm pretty sure you can download it probably off their site. Their site's really good. They actually have a YouTube channel that they run that shows you how to do certain things, which is really cool. It's not just read it out of the manual. There is a manual in here, a written manual, but um, then they give you a couple stickers. So like I said, it's a really cool unit. The case is nice. I mean, I really don't have any complaints. If I can't figure out how to get it back in the box, but um, I think it's a, a nice unit. I can't wait to actually use it and try it out and see how it does. But so far, so good. Let's get back to close this nice case up. I'll put this over here. I will show you the next piece that's important which is the keypad. So here's the keypad. This is a Blink Marine keypad. This is the same keypad that most other manufacturers use. ECU Masters uses it, it's just rebranded. Um, you're gonna pay a lot more if you buy it from ECU Masters. So if you buy it from Mercal, M-U-R-C-A-L, is the company I bought it from, the guy's name is Jim, who I dealt with, they are the cheapest by far. And you can buy this, this is the 12 panel one, you can buy like a six panel, four panel, I think like an eight panel, but they sell these by far the best deal. It's like half the price of what you'd buy it from like ECU Master or any of the other PDM companies. So the first impression is this, it's super nice unit, it's sealed, they give you the nice DT connector, it's, Labeled on the back, very nice. The button feedback is amazing. It, it feels really quality. Um, you can put in the center of these buttons little logos for what they are. They sell those separately. You, there's a list of them. You can, hundreds of different choices. What's cool is this ring around here lights up. So I can, program in the PDM what color it is. You can use them um, as, like I said, multiple buttons in one button. So if I press it once, it's low speed wiper, it's yellow. Press it twice, it's red, high speed wiper. You can also, with the PDM hardware just came out with, you can program a, a pin that you have to enter when you get in the car to unlock the PDM, which is kind of cool. And then you can do lots of cool stuff with it. The keypad is really nice. It's it's all can, <clears throat> so it's half the wires. There's a can high and low, and then a power and a ground. So if you were to wire a 12 panel thing, you would have what? 12 signal wires, and then a power and a ground. So that makes your wiring harness a third of what it should be, which is cool. So that's the definite advantage of doing like a PDM and, and using a uh, CAN signal and stuff. I'm not an expert by far, so if I say something wrong or if I, it's it's just my understanding. So, and I'm still pretty new to this PDM and the CAN system stuff. This is my first time using something like this. So uh, I'm really excited to take my builds, especially my wiring stuff to the next level. So I will be using this like I said, if you order off Mercal, it's like $268, and everywhere else is four or 500 bucks. So, and it's the same thing, so. But it's a very nice unit. I will be using this in conjunction with something else, which I'll show you next, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> so, the next thing I'm gonna show you is from ECU Masters. I have always like been interested in like kind of geek out of motorsports wiring. That's why I got into like doing this high end wiring is just the, the not only the function of it, but 
the the finish of it is amazing. And when you see a race car, you see steering wheel controls. And they're the coolest thing. I've always wanted them, but most companies use a stretchy cord to connect the steering wheel to the power distribution. And that's a big failure point. Because all it does is spin around the column. There's no good way to do it. There is a company, CarTech, that does have a wireless. There's another company in the UK that also has a wireless button set up for steering wheel controls. But that wireless stuff kind of scares me. I mean, our, my phone, Bluetooth phone stuff fails all the time temporarily. And in the middle of race, that's like the last thing I want to worry about. So this little unit here, so everything I'm doing, like that keypad, uh, is can signal. So buttons on a steering wheel are obviously analog buttons. So this little thing right here converts, I think it's nine channel. Yeah, I'm gonna say nine, but I'm probably wrong. But anyway, it converts the signal from an analog signal. So you run all the wiring, this mounts in the steering wheel. So you mount this in the steering wheel, run all the wiring from the buttons to this, and then it has a can high and a can low going out of it that goes to the PDM and will work in conjunction with this keypad. So it first off cuts the wires down that are going across your steering wheel to a few instead of like me, I'm gonna have six or seven buttons. So that's a ton of wires if you didn't have this. But it also allows your steering wheel controls to work in conjunction with that keypad, which is really cool because say that stretchy cord still does fail. Uh, I can press the buttons on the um, keypad and I can turn it on with steering wheel, turn it off with keypad, turn it on with keypad, turn it off with steering wheel. They both work in conjunction with each other instead of against each other. So that is a really cool feature. I was really excited about this. It, it is a little expensive item, it's like $200, but for what it does and so when you build a wiring harness like this, you're looking for main thing is reliability, but you also wanna be able to have an easy way to diagnose. So anytime you can eliminate failure points or make a backup system that eliminates failure points is a, is a huge positive, especially in motorsports stuff because there's a lot of vibrations, a lot of heat, things get beat on. It's not a street car, it's not a show car, it, it gets beat on. So it gets rain and inside it, it just, it's not kind. So this is definitely a cool thing. ECU Masters made it again. It's called a CAN signal, like adapter. Um, it's, check it out, it's on their website. So the next thing I will show you guys is some of the wiring supplies. So big shout out to Pro Wire USA for this. It's a little over, so it's not in my way. They definitely helped me out and got me everything I needed for this build. So we got in here some of, I just got a bunch of different boots for the power cables. Got some more. I bought a bunch of them because I wasn't really sure like fitment wise which which style fit the best. So for the price, I was like, ah, just throw them in the cart. I'm already shipping a huge box. So we got a bunch of those. We've got some Kevlar harness, like lacing cable. So when you, uh, centric twist. So centric twisting is, the quick way to explain it is the way you wrap the loom of wires together. So you have a core set of wires and then around that you wrap another layer. So it's the way you layer wiring together. So when you wrap the layer, you do a certain amount of number and it's all determined by how, what your core size is and how many wires you have in the next layer. So you're, you're constantly thinking ahead and you wrap it one way and you lay it flat against the, the thing so it's perfectly smooth. If you can pull your hands across it, it's smooth as you wrap it around. And then 
you do the next layer the opposite way. And then you also can use filler wire and stuff because you don't want to have like a dead space. So if you need two extra wires and you don't have them in that layer, you, you just add them and then you just don't terminate them to anything. So it's definitely a lot of planning, but the outcome is it's a super nice, smooth harness. But then when you bend it, it doesn't put strain on just one wire. So if you bend like, you just group a set of wires together and you bend them, the wire at the bottom of the loop is obviously probably gonna be have more slack than the one at the top because it's a longer run. So it's going to pinch the bottom one, but then it's also gonna pull the top one. When you centric twist in that, it makes the harness more pliable, but it also eliminates that um, stress on just one wire. It also makes it not nice and tidy. You can it makes the when you put the shrink wrap on, it makes the harness look nice. So this stuff is just, you can use it in between the layers to hold everything together. It's really thin, so it it keeps the presentation good, keeps everything nice and tidy, but also doesn't, um, doesn't add a lot to the harness. So that's what this stuff is. Um, they make it out of like Kevlar, nylon, different stuff like that. So, just different grades. Like that's how this whole mil spec thing is. It's just different grades of of wiring, and then different techniques to use to take advantage of the grades of wiring. So, then I have it's like a USB power port, just in case like the camera dies or I want to run the camera off the car. Just always good to have that kind of stuff. Then my go-to DT connectors, Deutsch DT connectors, with the the solid crimp barrel uh, crimp, the chassis mounts for them. So you just bolt this to the chassis and the clips slide in. So then the harness stays. So there's one I actually fell out of the bag for you guys. So those are nice to have just to keep the harness in place and nice and tidy and you're not like trying to hold too busy. You just one hand unplug whatever you need to unplug. There's a, another connector by itself. I opened up already. And then there are some splice crimps in here that if you have wires that branch off, you can put them together and use this to hold them tight because you don't want to use solder just because solder gets brittle over time and with vibration and heat in a race car, it's its, its enemy. So you, you want to crimp everything you can. So that's it for that. There's more. DT connectors, I've got four guys. There, there also is two, which I'm not gonna use, so, but I'll kinda go over it. There are two um, Busman fuse blocks, power, power distribution blocks. So these were for my first PDM setup. So all these are is a nice way to put your relays and your fuses and then all the wires come from the back Then you just mount this and it's real tidy, nice and tidy. Hold everything together, sealed unit, which is nice. So this is, I'll explain for the first PDM setup I went with um, and then I changed my mind when, I, when the hard wire stuff came out, I kind of decided I wanted to go with that just because it's, it's more like a traditional PDM where you have the computer programming and stuff, which is nice, and that's something I'm really interested in, especially with like like data, and you can easily figure out what's going on with the car if you can have that, so. But they also, I bought a bunch of spools of wire from them. So this, I bought a couple thousand feet. This is Tefzel. order number and all that but so this is like the highest grade um, that you can go with it's um, again called Tefzel it's so if you're comparing like a standard automotive grade wire to Tefzel and then there's another one in between I'd have to look it up but there's a ton within the last two to three years it has become very uh, 
there's been a lot of information posted about doing motorsports wiring builds, like do it yourself. About three years ago when I built my first harness, I it, there was nothing. It was all hush hush, nobody wanted to tell their secrets. So now it's a little more open, you can find a lot more information. And obviously what I'm saying isn't, everything's not exactly to a T, I'm not a professional. I've done a couple harnesses, I do it as a hobby, I enjoy doing it, but I'm still learning. This is the first time I'm using Tefzel, first time I'm using PDM. So I've built some stuff with these Busman boxes before and I've done centric twisting with regular automotive grade wiring, didn't come out as good. So that's what I'm gonna get into with this. So if you compare like a rent, a standard automotive grade wire to uh, Tefzel, they, if you just look at them at first, the standard's gonna be a bigger wire. Even though they're both 18 gauge, the Tefzel's gonna be smaller. It's just because the materials they use allow more current to in a smaller wire, and that's it. But the cool thing is with this, from my understanding, I haven't played with it yet, I'm going to though, is when you do centric twisting and stuff, this is definitely more pliable. It's got more of like a memory to uh, be able to twist it and move it the way you want to. I fought and fought and fought when I use standard wire to do centric twisting. So I've read your final product is a lot better when you use the higher end stuff. So that's what I'm gonna try this on. It's definitely a higher cost though, guys. It's, it's an investment. So make sure you plan and you build bulkheads and harness to add later. It's just so you can do and change things and not trash a whole harness and throw it away. So that's that. There's just a bunch of wire in here. I'm really, like I said, I'm really excited to use it. Uh, I'm really thankful for Joey at ProWire USA. He, oh, the tape got stuck. he definitely hooked it up and uh, and helped me out. De like got everything out right away. Any question I had, he answered. Great guy to work with. I really highly recommend using them. So that that's again, we're gonna go to, now this is the other PDM I was gonna use, which I think is a good viable solution to um, a PDM if you don't want to spend the money. Like I said, the hardwire one was about 900 bucks. Their entry level one is about 600 with 10 channels. So this is the other option that I would think would be a good option for like a budget grassroots build is from a company called micropdm.com. So these are, this guy is a grassroots racer. He wanted to make something that was more budget friendly, that didn't need all the crazy computer stuff like a traditional PDM, but also use some of the key things that made a PDM really nice. So they give you, first off, real nice instructions. Their website is amazing. It's a, uh, it goes above and beyond to tell you how to do it. You have to have a little bit of wiring knowledge, obviously. But, okay, I'm gonna show you real quick how this works. So these are the units. This is the main micro PDM, and then this is an additional add-on one because I was gonna have more channels. So what these are is these fit. You have to have uh, like a busman box or some kind of relay holder that you can wire off of, and then these mount in the relay spots. They obviously take up more than one relay spot, but you mount those and these control the relays. So the, you still, you don't get rid of relays. Like a, a, a traditional PDM eliminates relays. This doesn't, which isn't bad. Relays are still really reliable. Um, they're just, they're older technology. So these make the relays programmable which is really cool about these is you can run power off these. I forget what the, the current is you can run off these, but the problem is these don't, like for like fuel pump ignition and all that, they won't power that. So you have to run, these have to control 
the relay. But these make the relay programmable, which is cool. And they convert it to use CAN signal so you can use a programmable keypad. So what's cool with these is you can program these from the keypad. So they give you directions on what to press and stuff to program the relays and program the micro PDMs off the keypad. So you never need a computer. And you can do most of the same stuff. You can program the keypad to give you warning lights, to have multiple positions of a switch. It's pretty much, like I said, the same thing as the hardware, but it doesn't, if you do have a relay that fails or trips, it doesn't auto reset. It doesn't give you a, a necessarily give you a warning. So, but these are $400 for both of these. That's for a big unit. So that does a lot. So it's, it's definitely what your budget entails and what you want to do. A lot of people don't want, they get intimidated by the computer aspect and the programming. So they want to do this. Well, when I bought these, I jumped the gun and this is what I want to go with before I saw about the hardwire because it just anything more than what the hardwire cost wasn't in my budget. So these, I'm happy though I get to play and use them, they're gonna go into Andy's car. So Andy's car, hopefully I will get to that soon, um, or at least help him soon. I know I procrastinate, procl geez, procrastinate a lot, so as you guys can probably tell. So I, I don't know when I'm gonna get to it or when I'm gonna be able to help him wire the car. This kind of rats us now, sorry Andy, but you know how I feel about that and you know how much I hate helping you work on it when it's like that. So I'm excited to install these and get you to have a nice system. And I think you'll really enjoy it once you get this with the keypad, but they're definitely both a really good viable solution. Check both of them out, kind of make a decision for yourself. The higher end companies are really nice. ECU master stuff, super nice. Motec stuff, super nice. Haltec stuff, super nice. AEM even has PDMs that work in conjunction with their displays now, which I really like. I actually saw them and I was kind of disappointed that I they came out literally right after I bought the hardwire. So there's a lot of, what's cool is it seems like lately there's a lot of companies coming out with solutions for like grassroots guys that won't destroy your bank account before it was you could only get like Motec to do stuff like this with CAN signal. So there's a lot of companies coming out with that, which is really cool and I really, really like. So let me show you something else. Slide it over here. Pull this box. So with we'll get into like a little more E30 specific stuff, since I know some of you are interested. I'm gonna be using the standard MS43 ECU with the N54 engine and uh, Castle Performance is going to tune it. So that's that. I wish there was a better solution for ECU. I would love to use like a Haltech unit or something like that, but factory ECU is gonna be the way to go. It seems like the most cost effective and the easiest to use. So from there, I will show you guys the next goodie. So this is the MK60. ABS unit from an E46 M3. I never had a race car with ABS. I was always like, eh, you don't need it. You can learn. If you can't brake, then you shouldn't be driving a race car. Well, after racing in the rain, like wheel to wheel racing in the rain, I wanted ABS. So this unit is probably one of the nicest units like factory standalone ABS units you can get, the closest to like a crazy um, motorsports unit. You can tune these, there's companies you could send out and they'll tune them so they'll change the thresholds and stuff. So if you're running a slick, like I'm going to, I'm gonna send this out. I think it's, I'll put the link in the description. I think it's like 3S something is the company that deals with these all the time. They sell full harnesses and everything. I'm gonna wire it myself. I'm going to buy the plug from BMW. They still sell it with the pins. And then, so you need this, obviously. 
so that's the pump and everything. Then the other thing you need is the, it's the yaw sensor. It's the sensor that mounts in the car that pretty much is, tells you up, down, left, right, side, side. So you need one of these, just bolt it in, chassis, plug it in, and then it goes, the wires from this go to the plug on the pump. Then you also need these. So these are the pressure switches, like a front and a rear, you need two of them. And then this is a block made by VAC that I bought with this kit from a guy or with the, he had this mounted in a, I think a Subaru and I just bought the hardware from it. I didn't buy the wiring harness because I wanted to wire it myself, but the block is actually really nice. So that'll be mounted. Lines will go into the pump lines right there. Wow, get my that hand out of the way. And then route it through the car. And then the last thing is you need to use the E46 blue connector sensors. So I think you can use like Z3 connectors and you can modify these. There's companies, luckily my E30, these fit. So I just have to shim the backs. Or I can buy Z3 M ones and cut them down right here, the mount, and then go a little further in. So I might do that, I don't know. But you have to use the blue connectors to work with the pump from what I've read and understood. Um, it's kind of, there's not a whole lot on these. There is, but there isn't. So there's guys that say they know how to do it and they say it works, but it's kind of one of those. You can find the diagrams online all day. So that, I'm really excited for that. I'm really looking forward to having ABS on a race car. I think it'll be really nice. I wanted to get into the, um, on an E46 M3, they have, uh, on the steering wheel, they have a sensor for traction control. I really wanna get into that. I don't know if I'm going to because I've read that the thresholds that they have programmed are so-so and you really wouldn't run it. So I think ABS might be good enough, might be pushing it, trying to run traction control. If I were to run traction control, I'd probably wanna go with like a full standalone motorsports unit that's fully programmable, but we'll see. Um, I'm also thinking of DCT, so I don't know. I'd have to look into how really that works with traction control. But I think that's, oh, one more thing. This is the display that I'm gonna be using with it. It's the one that came with the car. I'm not really 100% happy with using this. And I need to make a decision before I start building the harness so then I don't have to change it. But this is really old technology. It's a Race Dash 2. It's pretty basic. It does almost everything I need it to, but it doesn't do data acquisition stuff. So I really wanna put an AIM dash in the car and have data box, but that also is a big, big cost that I, I want, but don't really need. So we'll see. I mean, I, I've always, I've always did fine with just a, a solo DL and read enough data off that, but it would be nice to have it on screen. And also I would buy then the professional awesome makes the, their own temp sensors for the tires that are like widespread. So you just need one sensor per corner and it reads multiple different positions. So inside, outside, um, center, middle. So that is a, like a, a dream kind of want. We'll see what the budget looks like right before I build the harness. That's probably a $4,000 decision there. And like I said, I didn't want to dump that much money into this car. At first I was happy with using this, but then I, 
I did the PDM and all the nice stuff and now the ABS and I'm just like, a dash would be nice. And this is just gonna get older. Like an AIM unit, bye bye now, it'll be nice. This thing is just super basic. It just, pretty much it'll just tell me speed and that's it, and temps. So, doesn't tell me anything else. So I'm gonna have to buy at least a Solo. So you're looking at 600, 700 bucks. So, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I, I don't know, really. I'm trying to talk myself into it. Talk Felicia into it, maybe. Maybe you guys can do that. <laughs> but um, that's it. Uh, I know it's kind of a long one. I kind of wanted to unbox everything and kind of talk to you guys about it. I know a lot of people ask me questions about um, motorsports wiring and stuff. And I know enough to be, to get myself into trouble about it. No expert by any means, but Maybe I can get you guys, some of you guys, some of my friends that watch this to maybe look into it yourselves and kind of see what the hype is about. It's it's pretty cool. It takes a lot to learn, but I've all, I mean, I think once you learn it, it's really, it's pretty, wiring's pretty simple once you kind of wrap your head around the basics, you can kind of build off that. But thanks for watching, appreciate it. Till next time.